All right, great. Now, we've got Yogesh from uh, Lloyd's Banking Group. Welcome. Hello. <clears throat> I'm Yogesh Sholapurkar. Uh, I'm the product owner for the commercial API lab within Lloyd's Banking Group. So if you're here for the, for the previous talk, uh, we do eat our own dog food. Uh, I'm going to talk about commercializing APIs because there's lots about compliance and today's about beyond compliance uh, from a product owner's perspective because that's what I am. I'm a product owner. Uh, but I must admit, uh, we spoke of 2015. Uh, API days at level 39 was the first time I actually went and I heard Paul Rohan speak. Uh, he gave his keynote speak speech, and that was really inspirational. That was really the time when I started thinking about the commercialization of things, not just API as a technical connectivity mechanism. Uh, so the remit for our lab, it's we build client propositions that happen to be, so propositions as in products and services, that happen to be API enabled. So we are not just building internal APIs, we are not building API as a simple connectivity, it's an end customer proposition that we build. Uh, clients tend to be their businesses because we are in the commercial bank. So these are, okay, these are small medium enterprises. Uh, these are mid corporates, large corporates, financial institutions. Those are the ones that we would work with. And in the next 15 minutes or so, I'm gonna to talk to you about where opportunities for commercialization of APIs could come from how a client-centric approach can help us build good products, better products, especially APIs, some of the key questions we should ask when we are building them, and then finally, some key focus areas for product owners when you're thinking about commercialization. And I must emphasize, uh, I'm from a bank, so my examples are from a bank, but these principles apply to any business, really. Uh, but first, I'm gonna start with a story. And this is a story of a nurse called Kevin. What you see here is a scale of emotional experience, negative, positive. Kevin works in a hospital, finishes work, and um, fairly happy because you finished the shift. Uh, but then you have a tedious job of doing your timesheets. But there's an advantage to doing timesheets, which is Kevin's employer allows the employees to take salary advances against approved timesheets. So this is good stuff. So you can go and you can say, I want an advance, 100 pounds, 200 pounds, against the work that I just did, which is fantastic. Except that this process is very cumbersome. It takes three working days for the money to be actually in your account. Three working days. Uh, batch processes, uh, using BACS processing, obviously, uh, file uploads into the banking portal and so on. And then finally, at the end of that, Kevin can go and pay, and this is a supermarket checkout, and you can go and buy certain things. Now that's the current story. Uh, but one day something different happened. So Kevin was at the checkout counter and was about to pay, and the bank card was declined. And I have no money now, Kevin says. So. But Kevin remembers that the employer had uh, made some amendments, some changes, new features to the app. This is the app that they use for scheduling their shifts, but now there is a new feature which is ask for a salary advance. So he goes in, puts in 100 pounds, presses submit, and in two seconds, there's a ping which indicates that there's money in the account. So Kevin can actually tap the card and walk out, a very happy customer. And what just happened here is there was an instant payment API which was used over here. This was published by the bank that Kevin's employers bank with. Uh, there was a product owner somewhere, like me, uh, who had looked at this as an opportunity and turned this into a commercial API. And this was an API that was embedded within the, the, uh, the scheduling app that the employer had, the hospital employer had. And that's fundamentally changed the way 
an advanced process will work now. The money's in your account in two seconds. Now, this is a true story, by the way, uh, although Kevin is not true. Uh, and really, as product owners, we are looking for opportunities. Opportunities can come from many places, but we are looking for opportunities to serve clients better, to deepen the relationships, generate revenue, obviously, and save costs. Uh, there are some examples of where opportunities could come from. Let's start looking at them. So the first one is obviously customer need. And in our previous example, the need was, there was a pain point actually, which was I need access to funds instantly, not in three days, uh, for the individual. There was a need for the employer to make sure that they could actually make the, they make the money available instantly. Because remember, in this business, uh, as, as with hospitality as well, there's a massive staff turnover. And this is a unique proposition now for the employer, which is rather than go to some payday lending solution, you do the work and you can have the money in your account instantly. It's fundamentally changed the proposition that the business has to their employees. So that's one. Uh, you don't have to keep looking at new products. As a bank, there are lots and lots of existing products. Uh, so in this instance, obviously we do faster payments. Uh, but faster payment is, is only provided through certain channels, through the internet banking portal, through the mobile app, or for large businesses, it's uploading of some Excel files or something. It's all not necessarily very real time. So you could look at that. Uh, and there are other products we'll talk about. Regulation, we speak a lot about that. Uh, I think regulation has been fantastic because obviously it's asked banks to open up account data, enable payments and so on. But really what it's also done for people like me who sit within the bank is there has been significant investment in the infrastructure for APIs. So we have an API gateway, you have the whole microservices architecture, you have the security. So it's really like standing on the shoulders of giants. This has actually been built and now people like us can come along and commercialize things. We don't have to have, as Paul was saying, a business case for every single API, because now it doesn't cost us as much. But then, of course, there was you know, the previous speaker as well. Open banking itself gives us an opportunity. And I won't go into that because I think you know all of that. Uh, and then finally, we also look at inefficient customer journeys. And this is not just customer journeys that are within the bank but they can be the end-to-end -end customer experience. You can see, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, let's say there's, I, I'm a farmer, I need to buy a new tractor. Um, I need finance for it, I have picked a tractor, but I need, I go to a, a, maybe a broker for asset finance. Um, they capture all my information in their CRM system, but then when they send it to the funders, which is a bank or some other lender, they basically attach all of that as PDF documents to an unsecure email, which sits in somebody's inbox at the other end, and finally someone picks it up and keys it into their CRM. After that, they take 30 minutes to make a credit decision. This would take 48 hours. Now you publish an API, which allows you to get that proposal from the broker CRM into the bank CRM or the funder CRM instantly, and in 30 minutes, you have a credit decision. So these are simple things that you could look at, uh, many such examples. We can talk about it later as well at lunchtime. You could also create your own opportunities. And I think this is something that Paul Rohan spoke of earlier this morning. So as a bank, we have certain core processes, uh, and any business does. So we, do, uh, we have accounts, uh, we do payments, um, KYC, identification, you know, verification, FX, foreign exchange rates. Uh, we use those to provide services and products within our own channels, uh, but potentially you could expose those as APIs, truly be open, that's an opportunity. Because developers, um, fintechs, third parties, uh, who may have other ideas, who may have ideas for some specialized products that as a bank we may not want to invest in because there is no business case. And there is some market though, somewhere in the north of the UK or in Europe, uh, there is a special 
um, you know, financing solution for agriculture or something. Uh, but it's not, you know, it's not where our limited investment can go. But there are certain providers out there, third parties, who are interested in building it. But their biggest barrier to entry is building some of this capability. Whereas if you offer this to them, and this is really going back to the platform conversation, but if you offer this to them, then they create products and services for our customers, and you could always have a commercial relationship with commissions and other things, uh, but also for other customers who are new to us, new to the bank. So this is bringing new business to us. That's creating our own opportunity. But to, the key to commercialization, I think, is actually to take a client-centric view. And so what we tend to do within our lab is we call clients in, lots and lots of clients, and we ask them to walk through their core processes, um, their processes, their customer journeys, and then we say, where are your pain points within those? Uh, usually those are the ones that, that, that give us lots of insight. Most customers say, I've got this fabulous straight through process which has got seven steps, and everything is straight through except step five is dealing with the bank whether it's to make a payment, check a balance, ask for lending, finance, whatever it is. And that's where it falls out of straight through because they swivel chair. They do something on the phone or on a portal or something else. And that's the opportunity because this is really where APIs come into play. It's real time, it's synchronous. You could build an API there. And that improves the, 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 the entire end-to-end -end, um, flow. So if this is the case, then we start asking other questions, um, effectively questions that give us a product vision for that particular API proposition. We start to work through, obviously, the feature backlog, uh, and then finally, we try to come up with the minimum marketable feature set. So this is the feature set that we want to launch to market. And then once we have those, we ask these four questions. Are we doing the right thing? Are we missing anything? Are we doing the minimum things? So this is key because I don't really want to build anything, no bells and whistles. If you're not going to use a particular feature, we don't want to build it. But also, are we missing anything? Because we want you to adopt this. So we bring clients in. We effectively co-opt them into what we are doing. Uh, we share our specs with them upfront. We design with them. And by the time you've built it, it's actually been thoroughly tested by clients who are outside of our organization. Uh, and then finally, are we doing it in the right order of value? Because you need to know what the value is for the end customer. We actually ask them to come, even at a you know, posted stage, uh, literally asking them, can you reorder this uh, based on your value? And if you have a snapshot of 10 customers, and these are, again, you know, large businesses, uh, you start getting a sense of which features are more important and which are not. And then finally, let's just look at some of the other responsibilities of a product owner when it comes to commercialization. So a lot of selling. Uh, so uh, probably 18 months, two years ago, um, when I started talking about APIs, the first conversation used to be, and before open banking, it was, what's an API? Oh, well, that's a technical thing, isn't it? Uh, but then, you have to talk about uh, what it means to the business. Um, there is, especially with, with our sponsors and investors, uh, how it's a scalable new distribution mechanism, how it can improve not just client relationships, but journeys. Um, the, the, really, the, the next one we start talking about is the internal enablers. So we have people within risk, uh, this is a real business. You have risk, you have legal, you have sourcing. And if you talk to people who have tried to commercialize APIs, especially in a financial organization, you will see that this becomes a blocker. So how can they be enablers? Uh, the idea being you bring them into your own lab environment, you co-op them to work at your cadence. Um, they need to understand the vision. You have to have that vision. But once they sign up to that vision, we have seen that most of these blockers just go away. Uh, usually people within risk who will stop you um, are not there, they're there to protect the bank and protect the customers. But once they understand what you're doing, that what you're doing is secure enough and it doesn't fall foul of regulators and other things, they're fine with that. 
And then finally, clients. So with clients, there are some clients who are completely tech savvy, who have the technology to connect, integrate, and so on. Uh, but there are those for whom it's a complete concept sell. So if, if we were you know, developing a new flavor of a toothpaste, it's fine because people know what a toothpaste is, how to use it. They, don't, they know the la what, what is lacking in their current toothpaste. If you're coming up with an API that people haven't actually heard of, they don't know how it can fundamentally transform their business, there's a big concept sell to do. So I spend a huge amount of time effectively just selling to all of these individuals. And then the other bit I do want to talk about is uh, the hard facts. So you have to get the pricing right. Uh, what are you pricing for? Are you pricing for adoption, at least initially? Are you pricing based on value? Um, are you pricing similar to other channels that you offer the same products on? Or is this a value add? So there is a big conversation around that. Uh, and you do have to test some of these pricing points because they don't exist in the market today with a lots and lots of clients. Uh, go to market strategy. So that's key because uh, I think there was a talk of developer portals. That's part of a go to market strategy. If you have a fabulous dev portal, we don't have one yet, but if you have one, there's a plan to have one, then you can actually draw people towards it. Um, we talk about um, hackathons. I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and of course, working closely with clients. And then finally, adoption. So obviously, adoption is key for anything. Uh, more so in a nascent lab environment where uh, every single thing you do is tested against a business case. Uh, you want to build some credibility. And what I have learned is adoption by real clients uh, builds a credibility like, like nothing else. Of course, you should be making money. But if five or six or 10 or 15 clients say that this is fantastic, it's changing our business, um, we are going to do more business with you, that's when, when you go back to your sponsors, investors, uh, you start getting the funding. And, and to be honest, it's the significant investment that we need to carry on doing what we do, but also reach some of the goals and visions like creating a true platform at the end of it. But for me, the reason to really start thinking of commercialization uh, and the rigor that it brings to product development, because commercialization does bring rigor to product development. You don't waste you know, any resources at all, is the fact that APIs are going to enable new business models. Um, we know some of the business model changes that are happening already. So we have seen the first one in banking was FX to a large extent. Clients used to call us on the phone, ask for a foreign exchange rate. Then they came to the single dealer platform. Then they went to a multi-dealer platform. They are now on ECNs and venues. The marketplace, the place that Paul spoke about, location has shifted. It's happening with lending, uh, the smaller book but there are lending marketplaces being created. So instead of coming to the branch or to the relationship manager or online, uh, clients are moving towards the marketplace. It's a different place. And so as things stand, the dominant design to participate in new business models, not just that we know of, but potentially the ones that we don't even know of, happens to be APIs. So you have to get this right. And this is really the reason why um, I love what I do. And I think um, I, would, I would urge you to start thinking about commercialization of APIs, because that brings the rigor to doing the right thing. Thank you. Thanks very much, Yogesh. Good talk. OK, questions? Some waving hand, one waving hand, one waving hand. Uh, yeah, great talk, uh, Yogesh. Uh, just wanted to check, like, it seems like the incumbent banks are playing catch up with the challenger banks. Uh, might be due to internal policies and regulations and things. How do you plan on beating them if Amazon and Google and uh, we see that Amazon is the biggest lender in Germany? How do we plan on 
being better than these guys if they come in the market? So we're not, I can't speak for the bank. Yeah. But we're not planning on beating anyone. Uh, it's a client-centric view. So all we want to do is build deep client relationships, meet their requirements. If you keep doing that, I think we'll be fine. Um, incumbent banks, the, I mean, the largest thing that incumbent banks have today is the cost of capital. That is what it is. Uh, where do you make money? You make money on lending, you make money on mortgages, is the net interest income. Your cost of capital, because you are a deposit-taking bank, is extremely low. And so there is a massive advantage that they have. But it's not about beating the big tech or beating away the big tech. It's actually about if you keep focusing on your clients, and your clients are not necessarily the ones that you deal with directly, but having an open mindset so that we can truly be plugged into the wider economy, uh, I think we'll be fine. Great. One more question. Sure. Um, about the selling models, uh, can you share about what you have tried, subscription, per request, et cetera, et cetera, and what works and don't in your case? So it's, it's fairly new at the moment. Um, what we've tried to do at the moment is uh, not charge for the API call. Uh, because we can't really quantify that, but we are, we are doing products that are, happen to be a payment or an asset finance or something, and we are making, we are actually commercializing those. So there is a tariff for instant payment, but faster payment has a tariff, but what we are offering is beyond a faster payment. There are all kinds of things helping reconciliation, et cetera, in the API. So we've priced it as an instant payment rather than a pure faster payment and there's no charge for the API call. But we will have some APIs in the future which would be data related, so it could be a balance query, bilateral of course, not open banking. Um, it could be a push notification when a debit or a credit hits your account. That's where we'll charge per API call. Mostly it's gonna be a tiered pricing. Yogesh, thank you very much. Big round of applause, please.